This is an 1860 presidential campaign cover. It shows the 18-year-old young Lincoln, and if we look up here next to the 1857 stamp, we can see an image of young Lincoln on his barge flatboat. They were never quite that tall, and they were a good bit longer, and he's going down the Mississippi. Under Lincoln's portrait is Lincoln as a rail splitter. This one I rather like because it's not an axe. He's showing a maul, which is a kind of hammer, and a fro, which is a wedge to split the log. And that's a lot more accurate than the usual with an axe head. So, Lincoln worked also as a surveyor, shopkeeper, postmaster, and almost everything else. He became a lawyer, for which I, as an attorney, make no apologies. And he practiced in Springfield, Illinois, learning from his first partner, John Todd Stewart. He was the first cousin of Mary Todd, who was Lincoln's future wife. Uh, his second partner was Stephen Logan. Each of them went into politics. Lincoln followed their lead. And he lost his first run but then he won four terms in a row as a member of the Illinois legislature. Uh, he also kept his practice going and took young William Herndon in as his junior partner. He was key in having the state capital move from the Mississippi River at Vandalia to the interior of Illinois at Springfield. He later served one term in Congress, but he was not reelected because he cast the only vote against the Mexican-American War, like the Jeanette Rawlings was the only member of Congress to vote against World War I. So he wasn't reelected, and he returned to his law practice. He was prompted to leave that law practice for another try in politics. The blue label on the right, now this is a presidential campaign cover. But the blue label on the right, it can also be found in other colors. There's a, a, a black and white one out in the exhibit, too. Was actually first used with this motto, no extension of slavery, in Lincoln's 1858 campaign to unseat Illinois U.S. Senator Stephen Douglas. Their seven debates were reprinted by the press all over the nation, and they brought Lincoln to the attention of many. In one of them, he is really noted for saying, A house divided against itself cannot stand. This nation cannot endure, half slave, half free. It must become all one or the other. Stephen Douglas beat Lincoln, and he won his re-election in 1858. He then ran against Lincoln as the Democratic presidential candidate in 1860, but this time he lost. Lincoln was originally beardless for all but the last four years of his life. This Lincoln campaign cover with a 10 cent stamp paid cross-country postage between the West and the East. Most people's image of Lincoln came from such covers and from posters and newspapers made by artists and printers in the days before television and the internet. Another losing opponent, Bell, joined the Confederacy and was considered a traitor. Everett, his vice presidential running mate, stayed loyal. And he gave a long rambling speech at the dedication of the National Cemetery at Gettysburg, November 19, 1800, and the Lord gave us 63. Lincoln's much shorter Gettysburg address has survived in our memories, while Everett's is blissfully forgotten. Four score and seven years ago, our forefathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation conceived in liberty 
and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. And then the famous last lines that we have all so well memorized. And that this government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from this earth. Breckenridge was vice president for the do-nothing president, James Buchanan. Uh, Breckenridge also lost, and his sympathies are shown on this campaign cover used with Confederate postage. A little girl saw Lincoln in the image after the election, and she said, Mr. Lincoln, you'd look so much more like a president if you grew a beard. So here is Lincoln just before the inaugural. This photo was taken the very end of February, uh, 1861. He was sworn in March 15th. And he's almost, you can see, you can see how it's sort of scraggly right in here. It hasn't filled in. Okay, so that's his attempt. He's growing the beard. And he did. Whittemore had a very popular beardless Lincoln campaign cover. Well, he realized he needed to keep up with the times. So after Lincoln was inaugurated and the beard was full grown, Lincoln re uh, Whittemore re-engraved the plate and reissued the cover with the beard added. Lincoln had a hard time getting the best men of his day to serve in government. Many had opposed him in different ways but all were strongly in favor of saving the Union and against slavery. He brought together this cabinet. Author Doris Kearns Goodwin wrote a book called A Team of Rivals. For the most part, the cabinet members did perform well and serve the country well. Unlike large government today, there were very few people or agencies to perform delicate or secret tasks for the president. So Lincoln had to send one of his two secretaries, Jonathan Nicolay, out to Denver to get a large amount of gold from the Denver Mint, take it by a safe and secret northerly route over to Boston to be sent to England to pay for rifle barrels being made in Manchester for the Union Army. Here is the other secretary, John Hay, writes to his colleague in Denver with some further instructions.